Hey guys, you're probably here because you want to know all about celiac disease. What is celiac disease? And what are the things that you can do that can help with celiac disease? Well, I'm going to answer that question along with many other different questions in this week's Responding to Your Comments, where we look at fun questions, we look at science-based questions, but most importantly, we always look at the evidence. Harry Harry, could you do a video on celiac disease, please? Thank you. Harry Harry, thank you for your comment. This is from the acid reflux video that we did a while ago, and of course I can do a video on this topic. I'm going to give you as much information as I possibly can. So what we're we waiting for? Let's begin. So for every 100 people, one person has celiac disease. So that's 1%. So if you look at it worldwide, that could equate to about 80 million people, which is quite a large number. So the next question is, what is celiac disease? Now I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible. So celiac disease is where your immune system is triggered, not by a germ like bacteria or a virus or anything like that. Instead, it's triggered by a protein, which we call gluten. So then, your immune system produces antibodies against the gliadin aspect of gluten. Now these antibodies cause inflammation, they cause swelling of your intestine, which produces all the symptoms that are associated with celiac disease. Now that's very basic, and celiac disease is basically what we call an autoimmune disease, where your own body, your own immune system, is attacking your own body. Now this inflammation, this swelling, actually flattens your villi. Villi are in your intestine, there's loads of them, they're like finger-like structures that help increase the absorption of nutrients into your body. So by flattening them, they basically don't work well or they don't work as efficiently as they do when they're upright. And they can lead to many different problems which we're gonna talk about later. So as we mentioned earlier, celiac disease is an autoimmune disease. These are actually a genetic disease. So if someone has it in your family, you're more likely to get it. And because it's an autoimmune disease, because it's genetic, we currently have no cure for it. Now the good news is that not all celiac disease are the same. So for example, you could test positive for celiac disease. You could test positive for that antibody, but you could also have healthy villi. However, if you do get tested positive for celiac disease, you will have to eat gluten-free foods for the rest of your life to stay healthy. So the next question is, what are the symptoms of celiac disease? Now we're gonna look at them in a second, but it's important to remember, if you have any of these kinds of symptoms, you need to speak to a healthcare professional as soon as possible so they can check you out. And if you do come out with celiac disease, if you're diagnosed with it, the sooner you can get that checked out and that diagnosis made, the better, because you can then make changes and adjustments to your lifestyle to hopefully prevent any long-term health problems. That is the most important Thing. So the main symptoms of celiac disease, the first ones are gut problems such as bloating, constipation, diarrhea, wind and nausea. These could all be signs of inflammation caused by the celiac disease. The second thing that you can look out for is tiredness, anemia and constant mouth ulcers. All of these can be caused by a reduction of your nutrients that you're absorbing, such as iron, such as B vitamins, such as vitamin D. Remember the villi that we spoke about earlier? That inflammation is gonna affect how many nutrients we can absorb. And the last thing I want you to look out for is any unexpected weight loss. So this is when you're losing weight without you actually trying. You might feel that your clothes feel looser, your trousers feel looser, and also a loss of appetite. All of these kinds of symptoms are what we call red flags for you to speak to your healthcare professional. You need to get in touch with your healthcare professional as soon as possible if you have any of these kinds of symptoms that we spoke about because they can then investigate to see what's going on. I am gonna leave a full list of them in the description below as well. And also remember, these kinds of symptoms of the gut, they don't just happen in celiac disease. There can be many other conditions that have these kinds of symptoms as well that affect the gut or affect elsewhere in the body. So remember, any of these symptoms, please make an appointment as soon as possible to speak to your healthcare professional. That is the most important thing. And one last thing before we move on to those tips to help with celiac disease, please remember if you have any of these kinds of symptoms that we've just spoke about, do not make a self-diagnosis that you think it might be celiac disease. You need to speak to a healthcare professional, but the reason I'm saying don't make that self-diagnosis and don't start eliminating gluten from your diet is that the, what your healthcare professional is gonna do is they're gonna do a blood test. And that blood test is gonna check for those antibodies that we spoke about right at the start about how gluten and the immune system response causes the antibodies, okay? And if you're gonna reduce your gluten intake or stop gluten, those antibodies aren't gonna be produced. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna do a blood test and it's gonna be a false negative. So what's gonna happen, what that means 
is that because you stopped having that gluten, the antibodies aren't gonna be raised, so it's gonna look like you're fine, you don't have to see that disease. So please, 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 speak to your healthcare professional first before making any changes. Now, if you have spoken to your healthcare professional, and have told you that you need to stop your gluten, or you're being diagnosed with celiac disease, then the next steps, the next tips that I'm gonna go through are for you. So step number one, probably the easiest of all the steps, get rid of any food in your household that contains gluten. This includes things like wheat, rye, and barley. Some celiacs are sensitive to oats too. Now when I say get rid, I don't mean throw them in the bin. Donate them to a food bank or give them to a friend or a family member. Don't throw them in the bin, that's not nice. Step number two, research the foods that you can eat. Remember, right at the start of the video, I said there's probably about 80 million people with celiac disease around the world. And because of that, there's loads of online resources like forums and charity websites for celiac disease that exist with loads of useful information about different foods that you can and can't have. I'm gonna leave links to them in the description below. But see what you can and can't have, research into it. And also, keep a list, keep a diary. Everyone has one of these. Keep a list, keep a diary of what foods you've eaten, what foods you've gotten well with, and what foods you haven't gotten well with, and try and avoid them foods. Step number three, probably something that a lot of people forget about. Remember, where you prepare food has to be gluten-free as well. So what I mean by that is, if you're preparing food at the place where someone else also prepares food who isn't on a gluten-free diet, there can be cross-contamination. So remember to have your own separate area and clean and tidy everything before you use it. Otherwise, you might get contamination and then you might get a flare-up and nobody wants that. Step number four, accept that sticking to a gluten-free diet can be difficult. Look, don't be hard on yourself. It's very difficult to maintain a gluten-free diet, especially when you're first beginning. So whether you do it intentionally or you do it accidentally, don't be too hard on yourself. Step number five, allow time for your gut to heal. Look, remember at the start of the video, we talked about the inflammation caused by the gluten that can flatten your villi. Give it time, once you go gluten free, those villi will recover and the inflammation will reduce. So don't be too hard on yourself and don't worry about it. Just try and maintain that gluten free diet to help with the rehealing process of the gut. Now learning which foods have gluten in them and which are gluten free can take a bit of time and it requires you to build that knowledge slowly. Now I can list loads of different foods in this video but we're gonna be here till tomorrow and I'm sure you don't want that. But what I will do is I'm gonna leave loads more information and resources in the description below all about this. So if you do want more information about it, feel free to check out that description. Step number six, I really do feel like I should have used this step as step number one, but unfortunately I've already filmed the other ones, so I'm gonna do it as step number six. Please involve a dietitian in your healthcare. If you have celiac disease, you need to get a dietitian involved in your health. They are awesome. They know so much about what to eat, all about celiac disease, and they can really get a plan and get you involved into creating something great that you like. So please get a dietitian involved. If you're in England, if you live in the UK, the NHS does have access to dietitians that you can speak to. So if you speak to your healthcare professionals, if you speak to your GP practice, they can get you involved with a dietitian quite easily. But if you live abroad, speak to your healthcare professionals or get in touch with your dietitian directly. I don't know how it works abroad, you will probably know better than me. So the next question is, what are the long-term health problems of celiac disease? Look, if celiac disease is not controlled, you are at an increased risk of getting these kinds of health problems. So for example, nutritional deficiencies is one of them, which is quite important when you have celiac disease, your healthcare professional will do regular blood tests on you to check your vitamin D levels, to check your other vitamin levels, to check your blood levels, to make sure that you have no nutritional deficiencies. Because if you do, you could be at a higher risk of, let's say, osteoporosis. Now your spleen may also become less effective at fighting off disease, which is why it's super important that if you do have celiac disease, you do get vaccinated regularly for whichever vaccines you require. For example, vaccination for influenza, vaccination for pneumonia. Now, unfortunately, you will be at a higher risk of developing certain cancers like Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, as well as small bowel cancer. And if you ever are feeling anxious or depressed about your celiac disease, then please do speak to your healthcare professional about it so they can help you manage your condition better and help you have a better quality of life. So Harry Harry, thank you for your comment. I really do hope that you found this information about celiac disease useful. And I hope anyone else who's watching who's searched this video or found it, however you found it, 
I hope you found this information helpful. You now know all about celiac disease, you now know all about how it happens, why it happens, you now know all about the tips on how to manage the condition, and you also know about the symptoms to look out for, what to do, and the importance of speaking to your healthcare professional as soon as possible if you have any of the symptoms that we spoke about earlier, which I've also left in the description below. So you're a pro, so tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones, tell everyone you know, because you now know about celiac disease. So it looks like we've run out of time again in this week's responding to your comments. If I didn't get back to your question, I'm really sorry. We are getting so many comments and so many questions these days it's really difficult to fit them all into one episode of responding to your comments. So what I say every single week, leave another comment. If I miss your comment, please keep on leaving those comments and eventually I will get back to you. That's the end of this week's video. Always remember that you're awesome and I will see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos.